Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humbly and Me, and today we are making something I'm calling a nourishing lip mask, but honestly, this is a super, super versatile DIY. It's a beautiful, rich ointment that's wonderful for any kind of dry, irritated skin, so you can use it on your lips, but it's also lovely on things like cuticles, elbows, dry feet, sort of wherever you feel, you know, could use a little bit of extra pampering. The bulk of this formulation is rich lanolin, which is absolutely wonderful for dry, irritated skin. I've complemented that with moisturizing lanolin, castor oil, and gorgeous golden jojoba oil. The entire mixture is thickened with some sirabellina or beeswax. I did try both. I prefer the gorgeous oil gel ointment tea consistency that we get from the sirabellina, but if you don't have it, beeswax absolutely works as well. For more information on this simple formulation, please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post, which is linked in the description box below. You'll find a lot more information there, including information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, where to buy all the ingredients, and a whole lot more. But come on, let's get started. We're going to begin by combining our heated phase ingredients in one of these little cups. And I'm going to use this one that already contains the lanolin because you can see it's really, really sticky and getting it all in there was a bit of a thing. So I'm just gonna leave it in there and add everything else to this little glass bowl. In here, we already have 4.55 grams of lanolin. And to that, we are going to add one and a half grams of liquid soy lecithin and four substitutions. Please make sure you're reading the blog post linked in the description box below. 1.5 grams castor oil, 1.4 grams golden jojoba oil, and one gram sirabellina or beeswax. To melt everything together, I'm going to use a water bath. So this is a small saucepan that has about a centimeter or a third of an inch in the bottom of it. And I'm going to go pop this on the stovetop over medium heat until everything has melted through. After about 20 minutes, everything has melted through so we can remove our pot from the heat and then we can remove our little dish from our water bath and give it a nice stir. Now we're gonna to wanna to stir this reasonably frequently until it cools and is uh, more opaque than it is transparent here. If you were doing a larger batch uh, or perhaps just kind of wanted things to move a lot faster, you could use an ice bath, but honestly, like this is already noticeably thickening up. With just a 10 gram batch, it's gonna cool down pretty quickly. And so I just prefer not to do it with an ice bath because with ice baths, things move a lot faster uh, and I just sort of don't really wanna <laughs> press down on the gas quite that hard. So I'm just going to stir this as it cools. Uh, now that it has cooled a little bit, I am going to uh, move the dish towel and put it right on the coolness of the counter and that'll speed things along a little bit. I'll just let that sit for about two minutes in order to cool down a bit more and then we'll come back and stir it some more. Two minutes later, this is definitely thickening up beautifully. Uh, you can see that we're starting to get a little bit more of sort of a gel consistency here and the mixture is taking on opacity. Leave that for another two minutes to continue cooling. So after another two minutes of cooling, you can see we're getting that gorgeous sort of ointmenty consistency uh, that we want in our end product. So this is barely warm to the touch now, so we are going to add our cool down phase. Our cool down phase is very simple. We need 0.05 grams of vitamin E and I find that for tiny amounts like this, it kind of works best not to tear your scale because that first, first couple 0.0s take a little while to register, but if there's already sort of something on your scale, I find that they come through just fine. Once your lip mask is cool and you've got this really gorgeous ointmenty consistency, we are ready to package it up. For packaging, I'm using this little 15 gram matte black tin from Yellow Bee. And while that looks like it is sort of soft enough to put in a squeeze tube, here's a version that has been sitting undisturbed and has really had a chance to fully set up. And you can see it's a lot, a lot thicker, a lot stiffer, and really would not dispense well out of a squeeze tube. So I do not recommend a squeeze tube. Put it in a wide mouth tin or jar. For a bit of an application demo, this really is you know, crazy versatile. I know I've called it a lip mask, but you can really use it as any kind of sort of all over salve for dry, irritated skin. Now it's definitely quite greasy, sticky, unctuous. This is very ointmenty. 
So you're probably not gonna wanna use it, you know, on your hands, especially if you handle paper, but I really like it for cuticles and for dry patches of skin on things like elbows and heels, as well as, of course, on my lips. And there you go. So you just made a gorgeous, nourishing lip mask and sort of general all-purpose salve. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you are reading the full blog post, which is linked in the description box below. You'll find a ton more information there, including information about substitutions, scaling, shelf life, and a whole lot more. So thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.